This Building Bridges Initiative Report Manenos. Ay, 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 ay. Let me just say, it is very complicated. Extremely complex. If you don't support the Building Bridges Initiative, then everybody will label you a DP Ruto man. If you support it, then everybody will say, your team keleweke. Now, let me correct that slightly, yeah, according to what I have witnessed on this channel. If you have any slight questions, yeah, very slight, doesn't have to be a major question, about the BBI, then you're a DP Ruto man, according to some people on this channel. So today, I want us to start our show by making a very clear distinction. I am firmly Ndani 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 Kabisa of the Handshake and the Building Bridges Initiative. You know, as one grows older, they start favoring reality over pipe dreams yeah, or over daydreams. And so you will notice on this channel, I stick firmly to political reality on the ground. Yeah, as at the moment, I'm making that particular video because things always change, <laughs> sometimes very fast in politics. In my view, anybody who does not support the handshake and the Building Bridges Initiative is not being realistic. Now, let me just remind you because I realize most of us have the memory of a mosquito. Now, before the handshake, there was a lot of tension in Kenya. May I also remind you that children were shot dead. Oh yes. May I also remind you that we lost precious lives. Precious Kenyan lives. May I also remind you that there were many Kenyans who were sleeping hungry. Yeah, because they couldn't go to work because there was no work. No business, or rather most business were not operating. Yeah, the tensions were just too high in the country. Now, the handshake brought that to an end. Yeah, people could go back to work, go back to whatever they do to earn a living, and especially the vast majority of Kenyans who are laborers yeah, and are probably paid daily or weekly could now start putting food on the table for their precious families. So, no question about it, I support the handshake and I support the Building Bridges Initiative. 10,000% and I have no apologies to make. Now, what I don't support is the Building Bridges Initiative report. Yeah, let's make that distinction. I don't support the report because I never support anything for the sake of supporting it. Now, today I'm going to say a lot of things about that report. Yeah, but I want all of you to bear in mind, I am fully behind the handshake because it's all we have. Whatever you want to say about President Uhuru Kenyatta, he will go down in history yeah, as a president of Kenya who made a critical decision and a very difficult one indeed when it needed to be made and saved the country. Yeah, whatever happened with the elections, whatever happened before that, whatever his policies are, whether in ODM or, or Jubilee, that history is going to record, I'm certain. History is also going to note, yet again, the contribution of patriot, living legend, yeah, Raila Amolo Odinga. A man who has won a record number of presidential elections, but has never set foot into State House as the occupant. Without these two gentlemen, I don't know where we'd be today. We would be in chaos, definitely. But I must quickly add, of course, there's the hand of God, yeah, the most important. Almighty God, the one who was able to touch the heart of a man, a man who had won an election, but his victory was locked up <laughs> in servers in France. And that man opted yeah, not to pursue his victory at all costs, including the cost of human life, yeah, and instead to be mature and to put the country first. History will also note that. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, 
let's roll up our sleeves and get down to serious business. Now, I firmly believe, yeah, whatever anybody wants to say, I firmly believe what happened to the BBI report is that politics, current Kenyan politics, happened to it. And I'm not going to miss my words. Yeah, the main person to blame yeah, for the BBI report coming out the way it did is Deputy President William Samoy Ruto and Tim Tangatanga. You will remember that the BBI team had not even settled down to start their work when the attacks, the barrage of attacks from Tim Tangatanga started. Oh, you want to create a powerful prime minister. Oh, we will not accept this. Oh, this is supposed to do that. It's supposed to do this. We will not accept. Blah, blah, blah. It is like you go for an exam. Yeah, and you're just about to sit down and start doing the exam. And then the examiner starts telling you, you will fail. You've already failed. There's no point in going ahead to write your paper. Yeah, because you'll fail. And you read the first question. Yeah, and you start answering it. And then the examiner comes again yeah, and says, remember what I told you? You'll fail. Every 10 minutes, when you're just getting a train of thought together, yeah, and things are starting to flow, this examiner interrupts you. You will fail. I know you're going to focus on the Pythagoras theorem, but you're wrong. Yeah, that cannot be correct. I know you're going to make this mistake that is commonly made. Yeah, I don't know why you're wasting your time writing this paper. Yeah, go to the beach and have fun. Go home and relax. Listen to music. Don't waste your time. Now, how on earth do you do an exam under such circumstances? Yeah. How on earth is a BBI team expected yeah, to bring out a report that will change the country for the better, that will help a vast majority of Kenyans yeah, have a better life? When there's a barrage of political attack, yeah, well targeted yeah, at it, how? Now, of course, the ideal situation would have been for those uh, writing the report to retreat somewhere. Yeah, no news on Kenyan politics, blah, blah, blah. And uh, then write the report, completely oblivious of any developments in Kenyan politics. Yeah, but of course, that was not realistic. And I believe this pressure was felt by the handshake principles right up to the final stages of writing the BBI report. So that the document we got in the end yeah, was really a PR paper. Yeah. Have you noticed how the report avoided contentious, controversial issues? Did you notice the 5% compensation or 5% commission, if you can call it that, yeah, of whistleblowers who managed to blow the whistle on time yeah, and get the country to save millions or billions uh, from corrupt deals. Anything that will fight corruption right now in Kenya is music to the ears of Kenyans. But having said that, I think most of us realize that this thing is totally unrealistic. Where will you blow the whistle? While you're in this Kenya? Ama <laughs> you'll hammer to planet Mars and then file your report from there. <laughs> Even if the very powerful cartels and powerful people behind these corrupt deals yeah, don't get to you, and somehow, by some miracle, a court awards you money, that cash has to be approved. Yeah? And you see, these people have their people in government. They'll be hitches all the time. Yeah? Maybe your great, great, great grandchildren are going to get that 5% uh, compensation. <laughs> If at all, yeah, I mean, just look at the history of court awards to individuals in Kenya against the government of Kenya. How many have been paid? <laughs> yeah. And so in my view, it is totally unrealistic to expect yeah, a person to be paid by the government of Kenya after blowing the whistle. Yeah, I just don't see that happening. I could be wrong, but judging by what we have gone through in the past, that is a tall order. Yeah, but it's, of course it's excellent PR. Designed to get Wananchi very happy and very excited. I mean, 5% of a billion is money you cannot count in a day. <laughs> it is serious money. But somehow, I just can't picture 
a press conference with five or six Kenyans whistleblowers here receiving their checks. I can't, not yet at least. Now let's just go back into history and let me remind you of something that makes me very sad. Yeah. In the last stages of the preparation of the 2010 constitution, Deputy President William Samoy Ruto was a prominent participant. You see, after the 2007-2008 clashes, yeah, the Rift Valley became very important to Kenya. So important that the rest of Kenya is not as important. So the final stages yeah, of the preparation of the new constitution yeah, that happened in Kabete, yeah, in the outskirts of Nairobi, and involved people like Martha Karua, and of course Deputy President William Samoy Ruto, at that time simply William Samoy Ruto, MP, quickly degenerated yeah, to a situation of what the Rift Valley will accept, what William Ruto will accept. Yeah, and of course that was political reality because the people behind the 2010 constitution did not want a situation where the entire Rift Valley opposed the new constitution. If that had happened, then it would have been very difficult to pass the constitution successfully. And so people bent over backwards for William Samuel Ruto. But then when finally the document was ready, guess what happened? William Samuel Ruto was in the no camp, yeah, the camp opposing the new constitution. Now I'm telling you that story because once again, William Samuel Ruto is a key factor when we want to change our constitution. A key factor in making it very difficult for the country to have a conversation on contentious issues, controversial issues which we cannot all agree on, but which are still critical here for the well-being of our country going forward. Now, of course, I discuss in great detail here many other issues that the DP Ruto camp will never tell their supporters, let alone telling everybody else yeah, about the BBI report and what their real motive is. And I talk about very deep stuff, yeah, not obvious stuff like, I don't want a prime minister, a powerful prime minister, because I want to be president, a powerful president. We don't want a parliamentary system and a prime minister because we want to see D.P. Ruto in a presidential motorcade. A parliamentary system is bad yeah, because we will not be able to see William Samoy Ruto being addressed as Mutukufu Rais wa Jamuri wa Kenya na Mukuu wa Majeshi Yote. Oh yes, the kind of thing that would send a chill of joy through the spines of some Kenyans yeah, and actually give them a real orgasm. Very selfish and very sad yeah, because these people saying this have not told us what is wrong with the parliamentary system and why it cannot work in Kenya. They haven't. They have no time to tell us that. <laughs> and yet that is really what matters to Mother Kenya and to the future. Because constitutions and amendments to constitutions are not for certain individuals yeah, in the current political scene. No, they are for posterity. How will a presidential system pan out for us yeah, 50 years from now when an irresponsible idiot is elected to the presidency? By the way, I highly recommend the latest weekly intelligence briefings and the latest Club 1999. And going forward, there are a lot of highly sensitive things yeah, that I can only be able to say in these two private forums. Yeah, private forums available only members yeah and of course uh, you can take advantage of the latest offer current offer yeah, you can see the email address on the screens right now anyway i cannot dare end today's show without making reference yeah, to an incident during the launch of the bbi that has caught the attention of so many kenyans all over the world that has caught the attention of kenyans on social media it all started when the Sunna east legislator junet mohammed yeah, and the master of ceremonies made a comment to the effect hiyo ni mambo ya jubilee ya jubilee watajisoto wenyewe kando eh? sisi ODM 
hatuhusiki ya yeah, something to that effect in other words the jubilee party will do their own house cleaning in their own time the president laughed yeah he really laughed but what caught the eye was the reaction of the deputy president he did not see the joke he looked in the direction of the president who was seated next to him with what looked like a frown yeah, as if he was saying what is so funny that moment captured perfectly the current political situation in the country and current alignments yeah because he told us very clearly that team keleweke versus team tangatanga is very real and if they're not fighting over the bbi report they will find something to fight over very soon something else major something that unfortunately touches on the lives of millions of long suffering kenyans and whose interests yeah will be the last thing on the minds of the combatants yeah, in this team keleweke team tangatanga duel political duel until next time this is chris komekocha